He's enchanted. Wow. <laughs> it's been a long time since anybody was enchanted with me. It's it's uh, it's not it's not hard to see uh, hard to see why. I mean, you're. Uh, I mean, obviously, we all know you from about weather. But I have to be honest with you. I, I flew to New York uh, recently, and I landed a little bit late, and I was just a bit wired from the flight. And I turned on the TV, and it was the premiere of Sharknado 2. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, what, what a great opportunity. And then suddenly, there you were. On television, excellent acting, by the way. I mean, well, <laughs> acting. <laughs> I mean, did you see it? <laughs> Well, it was uh, it's it, it's it's a joke, Al, because yes. I don't think there was any acting. There in was that. no <laughs> acting in it. There was no, there were professional actors in it, and there was no acting. No acting, exactly. It was, it was, come on, it was, it really, is, come on. I mean, it, it, Ian Zering is a lovely man, but. <laughs> so on that note, uh, but aside from Shark, you know, it's been. Uh, I mean, The Simpsons, Thirty Rock. I, I've seen cartoon images of you, uh, so it's beyond weather, obviously, and you're sort of now a popular culture icon. So how did this all come about? I'd love to hear the backstory. Well, uh, the, the fact is, in fact, I was just, if you saw the Today Show yesterday, I was at my alma mater, uh, SUNY Oswego. I'm a graduate of the State University of New York uh, at Oswego, and I had no plans of being on TV. I wanted to be a, uh, a writer or a producer. I wanted to be on the back side of this thing. And uh, uh, I, in fact, I took a class in television production, in television performance, and it was a true story. My department chairman told me that I had the perfect face for radio. Uh, and there was another guy in the same class. Uh, you may have heard of him. I don't know what he's been up to. I lost track with him after he left after sophomore year. A guy named Jerry Seinfeld. Uh, uh, he was uh, in my freshman and sophomore year at Oswego, and then he left to go to Queens College because he felt he needed to uh, uh, be in the New York area to, I think, do stand-up or something? Something, you know? something like that. Yeah, so I don't know. I, I think he did this little cable show or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, uh, uh, but I, I got a job. My department chairman put me up for a job doing uh, weekend weather at the end of my sophomore year. This was 1974. And I got the job. I was driving back and forth to school, doing the whole nine yards. And a year later, I got the Monday through Friday job. But I kept thinking, I'm going to just do this until I can get a real job, uh, like as a cameraman or a producer. <laughs> and I just kept getting jobs. And, and uh, nobody said, what are you doing? You know, so I just kept taking the jobs. And so here I am. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a journey that doesn't seem to be ending because it looks like you still keep taking jobs. And so this is what I want to talk about. Okay. So a, lot, a lot of us didn't know about the production company yeah. that you also have. So tell us about that. Well, I, you know, I, as I said, I've always wanted to do production. And uh, uh, about 1994, uh, I was offered through a, a, a friend of mine a chance to do a special for the Food Network. And I did that, and that was great, and I had a good time. And, but afterward, I said... I, I could produce this. So she's, they asked me, could you do, would you do another one? I said, yeah, but could I produce it? And, and uh, she said, sure, great. And so we produced it and then produced another one and did a, a bunch of them. And I started, so that, that's kind of how the production company started. I, but ironically, I actually, when I started it, it was to launch a website. I, I, I launched a website, alroker.com, in 1992. And uh, uh, wow. just because I just found it interesting. I, I found... I, I looked at the, back then, the World Wide Web. Uh, I, I looked at it kind of like radio in the 1920s. Nobody quite knew what it was going to be, but people put up radio stations. So I thought, why not, why not put up, I mean, how hard is it? We can put up a website. And that's how I actually formed the production company to produce the website. In fact, uh, I'm grandfathered in. I was the only NBC news person allowed to have their own website because uh, I did it before anybody knew what it was, really. Right, right. So, uh, so yeah, but th with the production company, the television end of it, uh, we just started producing shows. So I did a couple of series for, uh, for the Food Network, and, and it's always been kind of w what I've been curious about. Uh, I did a special for MSNBC about uh, the, uh, the crystal meth addiction that was going on back in the late... Uh, 19, uh, 18, no, 1900. <laughs> back, back in the 1900s, back in the day, when they invented crystal meth. Uh, uh, <laughs> in the 90s. Uh, uh, and I was just fascinated by the DEA, the work they were doing. So uh, uh, 
ended up producing a show that ran for three seasons uh, with Spike TV on the DEA. I was watching, like everybody else, I, I waste a fair amount of time looking at videos uh, on YouTube, and uh, there were these, all these hoist cam rescues from the Coast Guard. And I thought, these are, this is amazing stuff. And I wonder if there's a show here. I called the Coast Guard, and now we are, we're in our fourth season of Coast Guard Alaska, uh, uh, second season of uh, Coast Guard Pacific Northwest. We did a season in Florida. So I just find these shows, uh, the real shows, I, I don't call, co consider them reality TV. I call them documentary series. Uh, of the hallmark for our shows is uh, the bulk of them is that this would happen whether we were there or not. You know, uh, there's no drama. We don't create drama. We don't ask people to reshoot stuff. It's just it just kind of unfolds and we capture it. Which is funny that you even have to explain that because it's called reality TV and I guess there isn't very much reality. Not TV. anymore, uh, unfortunately or fortunately, depending on. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I look. It's a it's an interesting genre and obviously it's very popular. But we tend to do stuff that's a little uh, again more more documentary based. So if you produced the Kardashians, they wouldn't be interested in as much as they are. They, they, look, it's a very, it's a very <laughs> well produced show. Uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, uh, it's not my cup of tea, but I've got an almost 16 year old daughter who watches it. Uh, and I mean, I, 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 who it has so well trained now that when I walk in to the house and I can hear the, it, the on in the kitchen, I hear it click off before I get to the kitchen. <laughs> Or, or, or all of a sudden, PBS is on, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, loved, I loved that line, though. Uh, it would have happened whether you were there or not. Yeah. So what inspired you to capture that kind of content and create a company around it? Well, you, know, you listen, I work in, uh, on the Today Show. Uh, my, and I, before that, I worked in local news. And uh, uh, I'm very proud of it. And, and uh, it, it, those are, that's the, the original reality television. I mean, it's what, it, what's hap it's what happens today. Uh, and, and in a sense, especially morning TV, uh, it's not time shifted. Uh, people aren't watching it later. They're not you know, chunking it and watching it on YouTube. It's when we get up in the morning, no matter who you are, whether you're a millennial, whether you're a baby boomer, whether you're a tween, a teen, you want to make sure your world is still there. And uh, first thing you do when you get up in the morning, you may check your phone, but I guarantee you you're turning on your TV. And you're watching, to, whether it's us or Good Morning America or uh, CBS This Morning or uh, Good Day New York, you're watching to see what's happened in the day and get you, get, we, we set your day and then get you off. Uh, uh, I shouldn't say get you off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was going to let that one slide. Uh, <laughs> Well, depending on what you're watching for, uh, uh, we, we get you out the door. <laughs> Could need a minute, Al. <laughs> no. But the, I, 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 the other thing, Brian, is I don't think I even answered your question. Uh, uh, but I, I migrated to this because that's what I know. Uh, uh, I, I don't, I know, I, I love watching drama and comedy. And uh, uh, we have uh, done a couple of deals to, to produce comedies. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm based in, in news, which is the original reality television. So you also have Al Roker Entertainment. So how is that different? Well, it's, it's, it, it is part and parcel of the whole thing. We do, uh, uh, we do reality, uh, documentary television programming. We do some branded uh, uh, digital content and broadcast uh, uh, programming, but again, the hallmark of that, if you watch it, to me, there's nothing worse than watching a branded program that you go, oh, geez, here's another infomercial. Uh, I, I think the hallmark of our shows uh, is basically you, you, you could be watching a news program, uh, and we feel you are watching a news program that just happens to be sponsored by a, a, a single client, or maybe a couple of clients, but that the uh, integrity is there, the journalism is there, the uh, branded part of it is, in a sense, siloed off so that there isn't ever any question in the viewer's mind that this is not uh, programming with integrity, with uh, purpose, that it, 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 it is real information, that you're not going, is there a message here that they're trying to get across? There may be, but it, it, the message is that, for example, we did something with Eckrich Brands, uh, and they were helping uh, uh, returning veterans. Well, all the Eckrich stuff was in a, in a box 
in between, as in the regular commercial breaks. The regular, the, the programming was all solid information that had nothing to do with Eckridge. So the interesting thing about infomercials is that they, they often suck. Yeah. Just put that out there. Uh, however, there's a big trend on native advertising, right? And which is, it, it basically sounds like what you're describing, at least from an ideal standpoint. So brands that understand that you can actually be part of the journalism process. You could be part of the storytelling or content creation process and then be the beneficiary of, of, of being the sponsor just by goodwill or good right. nature, by uh, reciprocity, I guess is a good way to put it. What, what do you see brands sort of having a hard time understanding in terms of this as an opportunity? I think the smart brands, and we've been very fortunate because we've worked with these folks who get it, uh, the, it almost in a way less is more. You know, that you, sure, we can have your brand behind every scene that we have, and, and I can guarantee you that the viewer will be turned off and you will not you know, achieve what you were hoping for. Right. Or as we've been very fortunate to work with, uh, whether it was pure, uh, uh, Pedigree or, or ConAgra or Mission Foods, uh, uh, a, any number of folks, Johnson & Johnson, uh, these folks saw the value of, of, of pulling back, of not hitting people over the head with their message, that knowing that the message will be absorbed in the proper spots, but that the, the editorial content is, is king, and that if people are drawn in by the, that, that editorial, then they'll stay for the other. They, they under, the viewer understands the, the pact that we make. You know? uh, I mean, that's, that's the very nature of broadcast television. You, know, we, you have to put up with some commercials to get what you want. Uh, I, I mean, there are different ways to do that, but I think in branded content, if it's done correctly, uh, you, you provide a quality program and you provide a service to the folks who are watching, and you're providing a service to the folks who are providing the message. Well, I suppose if you, if you showed up at, at my office and, and told that to an executive, it, you would get nodding heads. But a lot of us here have to go back and bash our heads against the wall because people don't necessarily understand the opportunity. What, what advice do you have for them in terms of getting brands to see it differently? Well, I think they ought to, when they go to a brand, ask the brand, what would you, you know, what would you, and, and I, if you would love to take, uh, we, we would be happy to provide some of our programs for you to take back to your, your folks. And, and show them a typical infomercial, cut it down, show them a typical uh, branded show, the, uh, a, a crappy infotainment uh, uh, info program, and show them something that we've done. And say, which would you prefer to watch? Which do you think your family would watch? Uh, and, and put it on them, let them make the choice. Uh, because I think if you, once you see it in, in action, in, in practice, I think they'll say, oh, I get it. You know, they'll have that V8 moment, you know, that, that says, oh, uh, duh, right. uh, because it can, it, it can be very, very, look, the, the, uh, uh, the Search for Sandy uh, won several, a uh, number of awards. I mean, it was a, it's one of the proud, I'm, I'm so proud of this program, uh, and, but it just happened to be a branded program. But it had been any other documentary, it would have stood on its own. And that, to me, is the goal. Wow. Oh, so where do you see all of this going? Where's, how, how are you shaping it, and where do you see the industry going on? Well, look, I, I think, and, and I understand the chasing of the millennial uh, audience. I get that. Uh, you know, the, get them young, get them in, get, and they're young, and they're hip, and they're happening, uh, and they're also fickle. Uh, uh, you know, they, they move with the, the tide, and what's the next hot thing? I mean, how many times? This is the hot app. This is the hot thing. I just heard about some of Yip Yap or Yik Yak or something like that. Yik Yak? Yik Yak. That's a bad name. But, uh, uh, but you know, it's very hot right now. But uh, how for how long? Uh, I, what we are, are, are trying to do at Al Roger Entertainment, uh, especially in the branded world and the digital world, is to go after the baby boomer. Uh, I think it's a, it's a, it's a group that has been uh, really largely ignored by folks, uh, that we, we are looked at, and I am one of them, uh, that we are looked at set in our ways, we're not out there. Well, you, the, the fact is, uh, there's a lot of, there's a, we're talking 77, almost 78 million baby boomers out there, and, and we have $3 trillion worth of buying power. Three trillion, yeah, I mean, that's like, that's like ultimate Dr. Evil. Three trillion dollars. <laughs> uh, uh, so, you know, 
boy, wh why would you want to leave that out on the table? Uh, why not go after that? And, and I think if, if uh, you, know, you go after that, uh, I think it's an underserved market. I, I think that the, it's, it's just waiting to be tapped, and that's what we're trying to tap into. Yeah, but you're onto something that I'd, I'd love to, to just dive a bit deeper into, and that is brands understand the, the spending power of baby boomers. Yeah. And they're spending their money on billboards and radio commercials and in all kinds of traditional formats and, and print ads. But what do you bring into the table that's going to help them come into the future? Well, look, I, I, I'm, I think I consider myself a typical baby boomer. I mean, we're online more than our kids uh, a lot, because, A, for work, but for also for pleasure, for relaxation. What we're trying to do is to take, uh, I mean, I like to consider the fact that baby boomers, and, and I think everybody, loyalty is a big deal. Trust is a big deal. Where, where can you go that you know this is a trusted source, a trusted brand? And one of the things I always tell my kids, you know, I've got a, a almost 16-year-old, I've got a 12-year-old, I also have a 27-year-old, but I said, just because it's on the internet doesn't mean it's true. So, <laughs> you know, what, how, do you, how do you differentiate? And I think one of the things, and, and I think it's the same for, for clients and for, for advertisers, and, and we like to think of ourselves as a trusted brand, that uh, we've been out, I've, you know, I've come across all, I'm multi-platform. I mean, I've uh, uh, done broadcast, I've done cable, uh, I've been online, uh, and we take that expertise, because at the end of the day, I think people watch television for people. And, and when I say television, I think we have to stop thinking about online, and it's all TV. If you're watching it on a screen, it's TV. Uh, doesn't matter that it's a little a screen that you're holding. Doesn't matter whether it's a screen that you know you've got this thing, uh, uh, or it's a tablet. It's TV. It's right. being consumed differently and in different places. But it, it's it's no different than when we were kids and everybody had to huddle around the TV in the living room, uh, and it was part of the hi-fi. Uh, uh, then I remember when my dad brought home our first portable TV. It was a Sears model TV. It weighed 200 pounds, but it had a handle on it. And theoretically, you could take it from room to room. Uh, nobody did, but you could. Uh, and now it's the same. This is the ultimate portable TV. So our job is to take and create what I consider quality programming uh, that can go from any, that you can view on any TV, uh, uh, but that there's a, uh, an imprint on it that people trust. Yeah, well, the, trust is something that is synonymous with your name and your brand. So even in the video, uh, you were known for trust. That was very explicitly said. It was something that I had, I had observed when I was preparing for this conversation. Yesterday, in, our, in, in, in one of the presentations, we talked about the evolution of the sharing economy and the collaborative economy and the maker economy and all these things like Uber and Airbnb that are springing up. And really what's at the heart of, of these new technologies is trust. Yeah. And, people doing business with other people, and that forms sort of this exchange, if you will, in the form of reviews and engagement. And in that, in that regard, knowing that trust is so important in any relationship and now in business, it's, it's really difficult to go back to any brand or any decision maker and say, look, we're, we're trying to build trust here, and, and there's real good tangible metrics associated with that. How do, how do we get people to see things differently? I think that they have to look at uh, like, for example, I, uh, uh, I was an early adopter. I, lo I love Vine. I got on Twitter very early, uh, Facebook, all these things. And, and you would see engagement almost immediately uh, because people, they want to be able to reach out and touch. They want to, you know, it's still uh, uh, a social, you know, it's called social networking, but it's still people just reaching out, trying to connect. Uh, uh, and, and even though there's still plenty of, out there on the internet, there's still plenty of cats playing piano videos. Uh, when you really look at what's most popular out there, uh, it's the stuff from Jimmy Fallon. It's the stuff from Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, it's uh, the stuff that we put on the Today Show. It's traditional media on that other screen, on that other TV. So I think brands have to understand that they, they, they do themselves a disservice by discounting traditional, the folks who are who have been brought over from traditional media. You know, those of us who can go back and forth seamlessly, I think are the most valuable. Uh, because, uh, and, and it's funny, I, uh, 
it's not that funny. You know, when people, <laughs> when people usually say it's funny, it rarely is. Uh, it's like saying it's a luxury condo. Really, you needed to tell me that. Anyway, um, but I digress. Uh, I, I was shocked. I went out to cover, I was covering the Emmy Awards this year, and it was the same weekend as the MTV Awards. And my executive producer said, you know, since you're going to be there, why don't you go anyway? And, and the, only reason, the only reason I had an inkling of who any of these people were was because of my 16-year-old. My uh, uh, so I'm out there, and all of a sudden, Jesse J comes in. Oh, it's, it's the guy from the TV. Hello, uh, hello. <laughs> um, I was like, I don't know, Sam Smith coming. Oh, Al Roker. I don't know. How do you know who I am? I'm, I'm so old, you know. And the kids in the, Al Roker. And then somebody said, they, they grew up watching you. They, they, they watch with their parents. Uh, and, and in a weird way, I'm, I'm, I'm relevant to these kids because they saw me on TV, which is still, at the end of the day, uh, uh, people don't gather around the computer to watch events. <laughs> they still, you know, when the, whether it's the, uh, the Emmy Awards or The Voice, or those are the, the things that bring people together and then get ported to the other TVs. And that's how we engage, and that's why brands should trust us and, and to, to, to say, hey, we can take your brand and move it seamlessly. I, I, uh, just on a side note, uh, I, I was talking to Sam Smith recently, and he told me about seeing you, uh, and he said that it was because of Sharknado, by the way. See, there you go. <laughs> In fact, the true story, I was, I, I, like I said, I just turned 60 this, uh, this summer, and my wife said, what would you like to do with the family? And I said... You know what I've always wanted? I wanted to, I want to hike down the Grand Canyon, and get one of the, do one of those rafting trips, and we camp out at night. We do that for a week, and and it, all together, all of us together, and there was about ten seconds of silence, <laughs> and there, and and then I heard crickets, uh, and my wife said, oh, "No, we're not doing that. Uh, 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 let me get back to you with what you're doing," uh, and uh, and it's a true story, and. I will say it was the most spectacular trip. We took a, 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 a river barge in the south of France through this thing called Canal du Midi, and it was these locks that you go through, and it was, it was wonderful. And I'm literally, we're standing, I'm standing on the bow of this, this barge, and we're waiting for the locks to go up, and this guy goes, Oh, Al Roca, son! You shock me too! No! <laughs> shock me too! You kill a shark! And I'm like, really? That was pretty epic, though. <laughs> I, 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 at first, I thought, I thought my wife had put, this was a joke, but she had hired some guy with an outrageous bad French accent to do it. But it was true. It was like, God, everything I've done in my life, that's what I'm known for internationally. Sharknado 2, the second one. Yes. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to team up with this brand? <laughs> so many ways we can go. With yes, that, I yeah. know. <laughs> but I trust you, Brian. All right. Well, I, 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 I want to just ask a, just a couple of quick questions, and I, I want to make sure that the audience has a chance to talk to you. Uh, around that form of Jimmy Fallon, I don't think he gets enough credit in what they do for programming regular television in order for it to be bite-sized online. Yeah. And to me, it's, a, it's, a, it's an ultimate experimentation to show that there's this old quote from Blaise Pascal that says, I would, have, I would have written you a shorter letter if I had more time. And it's that, it's that concept that if I thought about it and really thought about what was going to be compelling to you and how you interact with media and your devices, then I'm probably going to come up with something a little bit different and more thoughtful. And I think Jimmy Fallon does a really good job. And I, I want to hear from you sort of how you're talking to companies about thinking differently instead of taking content and then just putting it on all these different platforms, mm -hmm. just being specific. I think it, it, and I think the, the trick is to l really listen to what uh, uh, the, brand, the brands need. What are their needs? And, and a lot of times we come in, or people come in and they say, this is what you should do, and this is, you know, what do you need, and let's see how we can make this work. Uh, how can we take this and get your message across? It's not a commercial, it's not a straight television program, but here's something that will keep people engaged and want to click through as, as, as this comes to an end. Uh, and, and what's interesting, and, and again, I look out, and I'm probably one of the oldest people in this room, 
But when you look back at some of the most successful television programs, especially ones that use humor, and I find that most brands, even when there's a certain uh, uh, intensity about the brand, humor judiciously used is one of the most effective means of getting something across. If you look back at a show like uh, your show of shows with Sid Caesar or Ernie Kovacs, these were really shows that were built for the internet because they were short vignettes that packed a punch and, and you remembered and people talked about the next day at the water cooler, uh, if they still even have them. Uh, uh, but, and, and, and that sort of programming still will hold up. Uh, and, and I don't know that a lot of what we see online will hold up ten, five years from now, ten years from now. But if it's really well done, if it's we, well crafted for a client, it will be one of those things that lives on and will stand a test of time. I'm not trying to be very uh, pompous about it, but I think you, you don't want to think of this as disposable. Right. And I think a lot of the, the Internet is. I think you want to create branded programming or programming that is not disposable, that you want people to pass on and that it's, it's something that they'll talk about. Yes. And not just be the next, okay, we saw that, okay, what's the next thing? Uh, because we, 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 we are breeding a generation of short attention span theater. <laughs> and, and we want, if you can grab people in that short attention span that, may, that is memorable uh, b b and build on it, then I think you, you've done not only yourself a service and your brand a service, but you've done the viewer a service. Absolutely. In fact, I refer to that as this, this idea of a human network, is that when you can talk to and through someone, which, which is really possible now in social, it's, it's, it's shifting this mindset from impressions to expressions. Yeah. And it's so valuable. And on that note, I'm going to ask you one more question and we'll get the mics ready. Uh, I saw this stat about boomers and how much time they spend online. And I wasn't sure if that's all boomers or just what you do to that stat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I like, I mean, I, you know, and, and I think uh, the best and the most, if you will, uh, authentic, you know, people come up and say, will, will say to me, he goes, you, you, they, and, and I take it as a compliment, he goes, you don't have anybody doing this for you, do you? I said, no. He said, because it seems like it's you. I said, it, well, sadly, it is. If, if, <laughs> if, if, it, if I actually were paying somebody to do this for me, I'd have them fired because <laughs> I'm not that good. Uh, but I, I, I am somewhat real. I mean, the one vine that I'm most proud of, my uh, daughter, I, I took my, at the time, she was, well, she was 15. I took her and two friends to a Drake concert. I will never get those four hours back. Uh, or, or the 20% hearing loss that, that I sustained. But I just did a vine of one, and it, uh, it was six seconds of me just, I, I, I can't believe I'm here. And it just, and pe people were calling me saying, I can't believe, have you seen how, what you what? I said, no, what? He goes, you've got like uh, 150,000, it's 200,000 views, it's crazy, you know? Uh, yeah, well, you know, it's Drake, you know, and co Common and Future. I said, does anybody have more than one name now? I mean, I, yes, I remember Sting and Cher, and I got it, but, you know, it, it's, it, it's, it, but that's who I am, you know? I was just, I had six teenage girls in the car this, two weekends ago, and for f driving up to our house for two and a half hours, basically three songs, one of them being Tyler, uh, Taylor Swift's Shake It Off. Yeah, Shake It Off. You listen to that more than three times, you want to put your head in a blender. You know? <laughs> and I'm a, big, I'm a big Taylor Swift fan, but you can only shake it off so many times. Well, I'm sure she's going to hear that comment, I'm and, sure she sh will. and she's going and, to shake it off. Though. And I think she's a very <laughs> talented young woman. Talk about somebody who's, who, you know, who's taken and moved the needle, you know? Country, I mean, she was on the Today Show when she was 17 years old. She had bedazzled her own guitar, you know, and, and was this, I mean, really, I mean, she could not have been sweeter and nicer and still is, but watching somebody who's gone from this traditional country to now the queen of pop yeah. is, is, is amazing, and it is really an interesting way you look at somebody shifting their brand. Well, you know, and coming back to Drake and your, your vine, yes. all I can say is YOLO. Yeah, that's it. It's, yeah, yeah. So did let's, you, let's throw some gang signs. <laughs> How many people in this room know that Al Roker's bike has a Twitter account? 
Oh, wow, somebody in the back there, yeah. <laughs> it does. I don't, somebody put it, somebody, I, I, I ride a Brompton folding bike, and somebody <laughs> took a picture of me and, <laughs> and started a, a, twit, a Twitter with my bike. <laughs> you know? It's, it's a beautiful The bike thing. is a pain in the ass. He really is. Because he's got more users, more followers than I do. <laughs> Very depressing. All right, so let's open it up for some questions. Uh, let's see some hands. Not all at once. Oh, thanks for coming, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> what a tepid response. Thank you. Oh, now there's somebody in the back. <laughs> <laughs> when and why did you start using social media? Uh, I, like I said, I started, well, I guess the web, is the web considered social media? I, I guess my first, I, I, uh, I went on Facebook uh, because everybody was talking about Facebook. So I said, okay, let me go to Facebook. Uh, uh, and and I, I'm, I'm, I have mixed feelings about Facebook. I, it's, it's a great tool. and it's a, I, I, I wish they'd come up with another phrase, other than, a word other than friends. Uh, because I've got lots, actually I, don't, I have very few friends. Uh, so now I've got lots of friends. But I, I, the, the, the terminology confuses me a little bit. But I like that you can reach out to people all at once. You know, when, you were, when I was younger, how many people uh, growing up, their parents uh, or their dads had slideshows, you know, took slides and had slides of the, the you know, or, or home movies, you know, the, uh, or, or home videos, you know, the VHS. Okay, you, you basically had to have people come over to do that. Now you can bore people <laughs> worldwide. A complete strangers. You can bore them by sending out your pictures and your videos, whether they want them or not. And I think that's great. Why should we have to suffer by ourselves? Let's let total strangers suffer. So that's why I started to bore as many people as possible. I think it's working. <laughs> and so on that note, are there any other questions? Oh, 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 whoa. Now there's hands. Oh, now but they're coming up. No, but no one wants to put them up, up, just like partially. Raise the roof. Yeah, there we go. There you go. So you're, you mentioned you're a parent, and yes. obviously you're a, a big content creator. Earlier this morning we heard an interesting uh, discussion with some folks from MTV about the millennial generation. Do you feel that there is um, kind of a, a chicken and egg effect in, uh, with millennials and the content that they are now creating, because I think some of them are now, I was calculating, they must be some of them 34 or whatever, so they can be the content creators too now. Um, and is there a way to reshape it? Because we're saying, okay, this generation has ADD, whatever. Well, maybe that's because the content we're, we're, we're producing is, is going to cause that. So if we reshape the content, do we have an opportunity to, to change, not to change a generation, but, you know, to, to mold... Uh, what's meaningful? I think you know. I think it's funny. I watch again, and I, I only have my own kids as my petri dish to watch. Uh, but what I find interesting is that they are, they can consume, and appreciate different types of media. I think they, for example, everybody said the traditional sitcom is dead. Well, what are the my kids watch? Uh, especially my my 12 year old son. He watches traditional sitcoms, if you will, that are geared to his age group, the, the, you know, the, the Hannah Montanas, the, the uh, iCarly's, the things that are on Nickelodeon and Disney, all those Disney sitcoms. They're watching traditional four-camera, 30-minute sitcoms, but they're also watching these shorter videos on MTV or Nickelodeon or whatever it is. Uh, and and my, my daughter, my middle girl, uh, uh, watches Seinfeld and uh, The Big Bang Theory. You know, so there, there's, there, there, I think they can watch and appreciate, and as long as we are creating the stuff that they will be interested in, uh, I think you can still do both, uh, and that they appreciate both. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's a, it's, it is a chicken and an egg, but I think if you kind of watch what it is they're watching, you, you, you get to see that there's a, they, they are connoisseurs. It's a lot like, like how, how I raise my kids as far as food is concerned. You know, they ate what we ate. We didn't, you know, my kids will eat chicken nuggets, like, with the best of them. But they also eat sushi, and they, you know, they appreciate other different kinds of food. That's because that's what we gave them. And it's the same thing with their media. I mean, if we make sure they watch 
other stuff. I, I always remember I, I was, uh, Leela, who's now 16, but uh, I was letting her, I was watching with her the old Abbott and Costello show and, and some I Love Lucy. And she looked at me once and she said, so Daddy, when did, when did the world become color? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I thought, wow, I never thought of that, you know? Uh, but, you know, so I, I, I think it's a long way. I, I think I answered, I don't know. All right, so we'll do one more question, and then Ben, I know you wanted to get a picture, so just be ready. So where's the, who has the last question? There we go. So Al, I have a question around, you're a brand, and a brand that has a large community of followers. How do you handle negative sentiment? I mean, people who are critical of you, or what, you know, even what kind of advice do you, you give know, to your for, kids? For the most part, I ignore it. Uh, sometimes it's, it's, sometimes it's, it's so over-the-top heinous that it's almost laughable. And, and you just kind of go in and zing them. Uh, but for the most part, I ignore it. Uh, because it is, you know that there's going to be a percentage of nut jobs and cranks who uh, uh, love the anonymity. Uh, but that, by and large, I think if you look at, in Toto, uh, it's, it's the, the positivity and the, and the sense of humor uh, and or honest emotion uh, far outweighs, uh, you know, I mean, the, the, neg the real negativity is a drop in the bucket. And sometimes when it's borderline and you respond to the person, they apologize or they say, you know, I didn't think of that or whatever. And now you've converted somebody. But when it's such vitriol or, or if, you know, it goes beyond the pale, uh, most times I will just ignore that uh, because it, it, you know, we, I think human nature is such that we tend to look at that negative and, and, and really be put off by it, but that's what you kind of gravitate to or hold on to. And I prefer to look at the vast majority of folks who have good things to say, fun things to say, engage you, want to be engaged uh, by positivity. And so, uh, you know, sometimes I feel bad. I, I almost wish it was like, what happened to you that would make you think that this is all right? You know, what, 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 what warped your, your sense of right and wrong? And, and, if, and, and the cowardice that's involved with it, because you know that you're, not, you're hiding behind this anonymous username, you know? And as I always like to say, sometimes people say stuff, and I'll just say, wow, your parents must be so proud. You know, uh, and it, because to me, that's, uh, I always think about that. What would my parents think, you know? Uh, uh, and, and that's what I, you know, uh, my oldest girl, who got involved with the, uh, the, did some stuff on the internet, and, 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 and I said, sweetie, listen, uh, uh, you're a, a, a bright young woman, and everything, you've got all, everything going for you. Uh, this down the road is not going to, think about this. I said, what would, forget about me watching it, seeing this. What, if, when you have a daughter and she sees this, what will she think? So, and that kind of took care of that. <laughs> All right, so Al, before I, uh, I let you go, I think Ben wants to get a picture, so we'll stand up here in the center. Yeah. We'll do that. That's fantastic. This will be my selfie, but it's not really a selfie. It's not really a selfie. Ready? One, two, three. All right, ladies and, and the gentlemen. The rest of you could care less about this. <laughs> hey, hey, Ben, well, how about this? Could you come up here and shoot back that way and kind of be oh. a big selfie for all these folks? Here, I'll come down here. We'll do that. But I think if we're up here, I think that's a better yeah, angle. Yeah, yeah. Oh, a better angle. Well, better I guess we get more that's people. what happens when we're short, though. I know. <laughs> oh, okay, let's see if we can get all this. Up higher. You go up higher. Right. Oh, quite like that. This? Yeah, like that. Ready? One, two, three. And then go over that way a little bit. Oh. Yeah, no, the other oh, way. Man. The other way. This is why I don't fly planes, though. And then up a little higher. There that's you go. It? Oh, yeah, that's great. And your stubby arms. Wasn't that a comedian in the yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey, Sammy <laughs> Arms! Sammy Arms, everybody! <laughs> 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 <laughs>